from the NR Hour Sports Show. This is episode 915. Um, joined by a really special guest. His name is Chase Griffin. He's a UC, UCLA quarterback. He's in his sophomore year. Uh, really looking forward to this interview. Um, and also, he's part of Degree Deodorant and also part of Boost Mobile, which we'll get to. And first of all, Chase, I just want to say thank you for coming on the show. It's truly an honor. Uh, I'm really, really looking forward to learning more about your story and tell, telling our fans about your story, too. And uh, how are you and your family doing today? We're doing well. Um, my little brother just had a soccer game today. My sister, she's at Stanford. And I think her dorm went to uh, San Francisco to go on a scavenger hunt yesterday. So we're doing oh. well. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so, Chase, I want to start off with your childhood growing up. And obviously, you were born in California, Santa Monica. Uh, what was it like growing up as a kid there? And uh, when did you get interested in the game of football, especially? And um, who was your role model that you looked up to? Right. So um, initially, I was born in UCLA's Santa Monica Hospital. Oh, wow. I guess things came from so <laughs> coming here. But uh, I actually grew up in Austin, Texas. So in uh, Round Rock, and then I ended up going to Hutto High School, uh, where football was king. It was a, a Friday Night Lights type town. Yeah. Where the whole town shut down on Fridays, and uh, the whole town was invested in the football team. So that was a very eye opening experience to see a community rally around. Uh, a sport like that and um, it just happened to be the sport that I love so it really worked out as far as me going to UCLA um, that came through you know me coming to the UCLA camp coach Kelly offering me and uh, like I said it was a full circle moment uh, I, I felt God throughout the whole process um, and it, it felt like uh, the spot that was destined for me. Yeah, so uh, before choosing quarterback, uh, did you get to play any other positions um, on the offensive side or defensive side? And uh, and also, uh, did you always want to be quarterback growing up? Um, growing up, before I could play tackle football at 10, which was my mother's rule, mm -hmm. um, during flag football, I played a lot of running back. But I always trained at quarterback. Right. Uh, I always enjoyed LaDainian Tomlinson. <laughs> yeah. highlights, so. Running back was my thing, and then uh, once once I got to tackle, uh, my father suggested quarterback, and uh, it really worked out. It's been you know my favorite uh, thing in all of football. You know to to play quarterback, and be a quarterback. I think um, every position sort of has a different focus on the game, and the focus of being a quarterback suits me well, and uh, has has led to uh, doors opening for me. Yeah, so uh, speaking of, uh, tell, tell our fans about your high school career and uh, what was that like, the experience like learning as a, a player and uh, getting better as a quarterback, and especially senior year, the most important year of high school and the waiting for your college offers to come in, scholarships to come in, and what, 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 was, it, what was it like senior year of uh, high school for you? <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. I think your, your mic is sort of fuzzy. I couldn't really hear it. Sorry. Hold on a second. Can you hear me now? I can. It's it's more clear. It's just quieter. Oh, uh, can you hear me now? Uh, it's just very quiet. Oh, um, no, yeah. I was gonna ask you what did what was what was it like for your high school career and what did you learn uh, senior year? Okay, so uh, my high school career um, went well. Um, freshman year, I I had a good crop of guys around me. It was my first year in the, in Hutto's district, um, and um, during seven on seven season, um, preseason, and then during the season, um, we had a lot of guys in my class at Hutto who stayed after and through, and that really carried us throughout our whole career at UCLA. Mm -hmm. I mean, at Hutto, um, sophomore year was my first year on varsity. Um, we had a pretty good year, but uh, we were a young group. Uh, we we're a productive group, and you know the future was bright for us. That that was sort of the the motto around us. Uh, junior year, I think we took a big step forward. Um, the guys in my class who who were key players really uh, took took a step up athletically, and just getting older compared to the people around us was an advantage. And then senior year, I think it really all came to fruition. Uh, we had one of the best offenses, definitely one of the best passing offenses in the state, um, really all three years that I played on varsity. And um, that senior year, I think solidified 
you know, that huddle offense as one that will be talked about for a while. Um, going from there to UCLA, really grateful to a lot of my teammates in high school. And um, I, I think there's, there's quarterbacks all over the country who, when they get to college, uh, we get there because of guys who, who as 14, 15, 16, 17 year olds were, you know, going to the weight room with us, getting extra reps, throwing with us, helping us to become a better quarterback. That way we could take a step to the next level. So I'm really grateful for all those guys. Yeah, so speaking of the uh, recruiting process for you, uh, before we get to that, I wanna, I'm just curious, did you get any advice from throughout your career from like former quarter, NFL quarterbacks or current NFL quarterbacks right now that are playing? Did you get any advice? Definitely. Um, throughout my uh, throughout my middle school years and in, in elementary, uh, I had the opportunity, thankful to George Whitfield and Trent Doe for two of my mentors for allowing me to ball boy for the Elite 11 for, I think, three or four years. Um, because of the quarterbacks uh, and the pedigree that comes through that Elite 11 process, I was able to, you know, form some great relationships, meet some NFL stars currently when, you know, they were younger than I am now. And uh, just to see that growth, see how those guys competed, I think set a bar and set a standard for the quarterback that I wanted to be. And uh, eventually, you know, I'm at UCLA now, a place where some of the guys coming through that process aspired to be. So, um there, there's been so many angels around me, so many blessings and opportunities uh, that have been, you know, steps along the way to getting to where I am now that I'm very grateful for. Yeah, so uh, this, this is my favorite time of the year when uh, high school uh, seniors get to sign their letter of consent to the colleges and whatever they choose to. So for you, what was your process like? Uh, and uh, before choosing UCLA, how many other offers did you get? And what, how grateful are you that Chip Kelly, one of the, uh, one of the great college coaches, to ever coach uh, to give you an offer to give you an offer to come in too right i mean to this day because of my experience at ucla i'm a college graduate um I, i've formed a lot of great relationships met a lot of great people uh learned so much in these classes and just had a, an overall great undergraduate experience at ucla um i'm very grateful to coach kelly for for offering me uh before uh, committing here, I was really focused on choosing a, a place that had great academics, which is part of the reason why I ended up at UCLA. It was a great combination of football where I believed I could get to the next level, uh, win championships here, but also to to better myself academically and to get a degree that I think will hold up uh, for the test of time. Um, before UCLA, I was really focused on the Ivy Leagues. Um, uh, growing up, my father, he, he had gone to Ivy League school. He went to Dartmouth for undergrad and then Harvard for law school. My mother had went to Georgetown for undergrad, but Columbia for teacher's college, uh, took teacher's college. And um, so I grew up knowing the importance of academics, uh, knowing the, the ticket and the value that a diploma from an Ivy League had in the professional world. And uh, if, if, it took me using football and using my ability in school to uh, better myself in that way and to, to get myself on an Ivy League campus and to make the most of that opportunity. And I was determined to do that. And uh, I had those opportunities. Uh, I ended up choosing UCLA over that. And that's a decision that I'm still glad that I made. Um, uh, I think that possibly in the future, um, I could see myself at an Ivy League school or a top school for, for another graduate school program. But um, for now, uh, I'm all blue and gold. Nice. Yeah. So obviously, um, how, how tough is it though? Um, how tough was your choice position? Because it's like the, it, it changes your life when you make these type of choices, especially in sports. And for you with you and your family, how long did it take you to, to make this choice? And once you made, it, made your choice, how relieved were you and your family was? Right. Um, I think UCLA was such a good choice for me that it didn't take a long time of deliberation. Uh, I think probably in between uh, me knowing that I had the offer here and my commitment might have been 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Um, it, it was more of a, I know that this is the place for me. Uh, I have so much history with this place. 
Um, there are so many factors, so many, so many key aspects of this institution historically that align with what I'm about in my morals and uh, what I want to continue in my life and legacy that it felt like a match made in heaven. And once I had the opportunity, it felt like a blessing from God and I had to take full advantage of it. So now let's get to this team. You just, UCLA, a high level competition team. And what's it like just to be competing at a high level and playing against like Alabama for, for the world, like, and then Florida, Florida State and all those high level teams. And what, what's it like to be in that competition as a player? Uh, I think as a competitor, there's no no place you'd rather be. Um, uh, champions are made here at UCLA, and uh, I believe that. And I believe that since I've been at UCLA, this is the best team that we've had. Um, our depth is good. We compete well. And I think that, uh, you know, week to week, there's not a game that we should lose. Uh, I, I think we should win, you know, every game but it, it comes with the focus that we've been building upon uh, in each day. As far as my contribution, uh, I've gotten to be a better player since I've been at UCLA. And um, each year I've taken strides last year in my game action. Uh, I believe I got a lot better each game and uh, I like to build upon that. And I know that when my number's called, I'll be ready uh, to win. And that's what I'm about. Yeah, so speaking of actually coming into your freshman year, obviously you, your team, I want to get to your teammate, Dorian Thompson, a great quarterback there, you guys have there, and um, and another mobile quarterback. And obviously seeing him, seeing, seeing, you, seeing him going through this injury he had before last year and overcoming it, coming back strong. And how, what, was your, what was the reaction when he got that injury for you, uh, for you guys and obviously coming back strong after that? Uh, I mean, he's a competitor. Uh, I have a lot of respect for him. Um, you know, we go to work in the same quarterback room uh, on the same practice field each day. So I see how much work he puts in. I think this season he's taken some strides, especially as far as protecting the ball. And uh, any any time I'm on the sideline can be his eyes and ears uh, and sort of his mind on the sideline. Uh, I'm about the team. So each week, it's whatever it is to win. I know that when my number's called to go out there, I'll do what I know I'm able to do. But until then, any way that I can contribute to the win, I'll find that way. Hmm. So um, obviously this season, it's already, I can't believe it's already week six of college football season. And it's going so fast. And uh, for you guys, what have you learned uh, from the last year with the coronavirus and, uh, and not knowing where, when the sport shut down and not knowing where everybody's going to be and playing with, and playing, playing, with no fans, and but uh, now, what have you learned from the past year? So now, with fans being back for you guys, I think that uh, what this team learned over the COVID year was something that um, was pretty universal amongst all human beings, and that was the appreciation for what we have, the opportunity at hand, um, being able to go out there each week and uh, play. Last year took an extreme amount of work and logistics, uh, which we're grateful to the administration for. And uh, to be back to a sense of normalcy this year is nice, but I think there's a lesson learned where we grew closer as a team. We uh, appreciate the game a little bit more and we appreciate each opportunity that we have to step out on that field. And I think uh, that spirit of, of taking advantage of the opportunity has led to us being more successful this season. Mm -hmm. And I'm, ex I'm excited to see how we build upon that. Yeah, so Chase, for you, um, tell our fans, what do you bring to the game as a quarterback? And, and also, your, what's your training routine like for you guys? And um, how often uh, do you guys, like, practice? Obviously, you practice pretty much every day. But what's, it, what's your, uh, your normal routine like for you? Perfect. So as a quarterback, um, I'm a facilitator and a supplier of energy to the team. Mm -hmm. uh, that sort of mindset came from George Whitfield, who's uh, one of my main mentors. I consider him his closest family. Um, uh, as a quarterback, when you're out there, your job is to facilitate execution and to use the pieces around you and up their level of place so that they match yours and match your intensity. Um, that way the offense flows, uh, like a ship sailing through the ocean. Um, as far as the routine throughout each week, we practice five days a week, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday practices are a, a lot more, um, a lot more fast, a lot more 
uh, work put in. And then Thursday is more of a mental walkthrough day. Friday is getting our bodies going again uh, in preparation for Saturday, which is game. So, uh, so I want to ask you about um, so Chip Kelly and the fans. Um, what's it like playing in front of this fan base? Uh, the, the UCLA Bruins fan base is it can go crazy, and they're passionate about this team. And what's it like playing in front, in front of those fans every week? And especially, uh, and, and and obviously the atmosphere is amazing there. And also playing and playing with Chip Kelly too so far. Right. I mean, uh, Coach Kelly has has been a big name in his own right for a while and been a staple of the college football world. That's part of the reason why uh, I really looked at UCLA as a place to play. I know he has a history of having players go to the NFL and quarterbacks and uh, developing them. Uh, as far as the fans, uh, every single one of the players is grateful for them. And what I've noticed is uh, the the den the the UCLA student group has been showing up strong at each one of the games. We need that to continue throughout the season. Uh, and then when you have the opportunity to play in the Rose Bowl every home game, uh, a stadium that you know every Big Ten team in the country, every Pac-12 team in the country circles on their schedule. You know, Big Ten teams want to get to the Rose Bowl. Uh, Pac-12 teams want to get to the Rose Bowl. They can't wait to play UCLA away. So we don't take that lightly. We know that it's a historic stadium. It's actually a stadium where uh, my grandfather won the Rose Bowl back in the in the late 60s with Purdue as a defensive back. So um, it's amazing how, you know, God works and how I have the ability, you know, to, to strap my helmet up every single home game and play in a stadium that has so much history in it. And we're appreciative of it. Yeah, I want to ask you about um, a former uh, UCLA alumni. I, I, I had him on the show, Charles Arbuckle. Yeah. He's, now, he's now the uh, commentator for UCLA also. So how big of an impact has he had uh, on your career so far? Um, I mean, he's great as far as encouragement. Uh, we follow each other on social media. From time to time, he'll chime in, give me a little encouragement. It goes a long way. Uh, he's actually a fellow Texas Bruin. Uh, he, he came from, yeah. from Texas, and uh, I have a lot of respect for him. Uh, he, he played on some great teams, some teams where UCLA was the force in football that I believe it can be. And um, I believe that uh, we can return back to that fashion. That's always been uh, a goal of mine since I chose UCLA to come, come here. And uh, I look forward to building upon that tradition. Yeah, so um, obviously you uh, and uh, Dorian are mobile quarterbacks right now. And what do you like to – the new wave of mobile quarterbacks, especially in college and now the NFL too. Like uh, from Oklahoma, you have Spencer Rattler. Uh, and then in the NFL, you got like Patrick Mahomes, you got Dak Prescott. I'm a Cowboy fan and Dak Prescott is amazing. Uh, and then you got uh, Jalen Hurts now and Kyle Murray. And what, what do you like about the new wave of mobile quarterbacks now? Um, I mean, I think it, it's definitely the way football is going. Uh, when the quarterback is able to run and uh, stretch the pocket, it adds – a dynamic that the defense has to account for, which can leave uh, more holes in their coverage, uh, which can allow for better passing game. As far as how I play, I have the ability to be mobile, but I primarily see myself as a facilitator from the pocket. That's always uh, been what I've done growing up in the air raid offense in high school. Uh, I look for the completions and let my playmakers work in space. Um, being a being a mobile quarterback is something that I've continued to work on myself each year that I've been at UCLA and um, it, it makes strides in. I think that there's there's definitely an advantage when the quarterback has to be accounted for in the run game. And uh, I think it's great uh, as football evolves, both offensively and defensively, there's going to be new things that come up, new body types for each position. I think that the quarterback position is becoming more inclusive for players built like myself who aren't as tall uh, or big in stature. And uh, I look forward to capitalizing on that. Yeah, so who do you try to uh, – I'm not going to say uh, – because some players don't like to compare themselves to other quarterbacks uh, or other players. Uh, but for you, who do you try to watch uh, usually in the NFL? Who do you like to watch as quarter, in the quarterback position usually? Right. So uh, two of my favorite quarterbacks who I tried to emulate after and enjoy watching are Drew Brees, um, who's from the Austin area. He's about six foot. So just an inch or two taller than me. 
But um, he, he's a great facilitator from the pocket. And like I said earlier, he's an expert at making his teammates better. Uh, going into each game, he knows how to feed his receivers so that, you know, they get very vested into the offense and it becomes like a well-oiled machine. Another player is Russell Wilson, who uh, was actually coached by Coach Bible, my quarterback coach, uh, prior to this year. Um, and it was always great when we're watching film and Coach Bible was like, man, Russell used to do that move uh, at NC State. So it's, it's great encouragement uh, to hear yourself compared to um, people that you revere and people that you know are elite. Uh, and at a high level in a game that you strive to play yourself uh, in. And uh, I look forward to building my skill set so that one day uh, those comparisons are legitimized. So um, I want to ask you about uh, the history of UCLA and also not only football, but basketball, even uh, great history there. Obviously, John Wooden. And then if you want to go Russell Westbrook, Kevin Love, um, and then uh, – <laughs> Clay Thompson or, or other play, players like that. So, uh, for you, what, what's it like uh, having being in the same college as uh, uh, the names I just mentioned, like Russell Westbrook and then Kevin Love, John Wooden, and all? Right. Uh, I mean, I would argue that the UCLA basketball history is unrivaled. Uh, there, there's there are other schools that um, have similar player groupings, uh, but I think all in all. Uh, especially because of the impact that John Wood had on the philosophy of coaching nationally, uh, UCLA is, is number one. And um, I, I think as an athletics program as a whole, there's Olympians here. There's a, there's people who are going to go on to be athletes, but also go on to be CEOs, go on to run businesses, go on to change the world. Um, UCLA is a place full of doers and, and world changers. And I'm glad that, you know, my diploma will reflect that I've come from this place. Um, I, I've, I've contributed to this place. And I think at the end of the day, um, everyone wants their legacy to be left, uh, that wherever they went, they left an impact and a positive one to improve the world. Yeah, so Chase, uh, what are you most looking forward to the rest of this season as a team and continue building and uh, hopefully make a, make a bowl game or go further in the playoffs? And uh, what are you guys most looking forward to? And also, obviously, you're only a sophomore, but I I have been focusing on the the future yet, or just focus on uh, this season and then building forward. Um, I'm a I'm a big believer that it's important to you know have an outline of the future, but as far as planning anything or setting anything in stone, I'm not big on that. I think by focusing on the present, you'll build the future that you want. Yeah. Um, the Bible tells us that, you know, men make plans, men, men want this, this and that, but God actually leads the steps. So uh, because of my faith, because uh, of my belief that I'm going to end up where I'm supposed to be, as long as I handle business now, I'm not worried about the future in that way. Um, as far as this season, I'm really focused on the next game. Uh, we're coming off a loss last week against Arizona State. We have Arizona this week, and I think this is an excellent opportunity for our team to bounce back, um, an excellent opportunity for us to really not just show others, but show ourselves what we're made of. Uh, I think games like what we have right now um, are excellent indicators of what type of team we're going to be in the long run. Uh, I was just thinking to myself, man, it's a long season. Um, we haven't played this long of a season in a couple of years. So um, our ability to bounce back, stay on track, get to the next most important thing is uh, paramount in how we play as a season. Hmm. So uh, what advice would you give to young uh, athletes uh, that are trying to reach to their goals uh, or whatever they want to choose? And what, what advice would you give to young kids? Um, I would say don't count anything out. A lot of people uh, counted me out for a long time. But as long as you don't listen to them and you believe to yourself that you can, you will. It's just like the little engine that could. Everyone was, was saying, no, no, no. But I think I can. I think I can. You will. Um, as long as you put in the work, the future will take care of itself. Have faith in yourself. Have faith in whatever you believe in that uh, powers you forward in your determination and, and your spirit. And uh, I'll just say, like, Godspeed. Uh, I'm with you. Yeah, so one of our co-hosts who's part of our team, uh, her name is Kia Lyons, and 
This is a question she loves to ask when uh, whenever she's on the show too, uh, to, with us. Um, she loves to ask these our guests, um, what's your key to balance? What is your key to balance? Uh, my key to balance is faith. And it's not just uh, my key to balance, but it's my key to everything that I do in life. And uh, it puts everything in perspective. Um, I, I think of recent, I've been doing a better job of getting into the work. Uh, I've always been a strong prayer. Um, ever since a child, I can always remember myself, uh, uh, the ability to pray and the ability to center myself uh, through my prayer, uh, through my faith. I think uh, by making it come to fruition in my life, I feel better. I, I am more positive. I'm uh, in my interactions with everyone. I, I keep it top of mind to you know spread love, do it in a way that makes their day. And um, as long as I can keep on that track, uh, and no matter what I do, I know I'll be successful. I know I'll be uh, someone who adds to the world and uh, someone who makes a little bit better place for everyone else. Yeah, so let's get to the, some, you made some big news recently, partnering up with Degree uh, Deodorant and also Boost Mobile. So I just want to say, uh, I just want to say congrats on that. And what's it like now <laughs> being part of Degree and uh, Boost Mobile? Well, the the degree breaking limits team, uh, I think really it 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 mirrors everything that I'm about, and uh, there's a lot of special people on that list who have overcome uh, true struggles. I I don't even think that my struggles are of the same amount as some of the things that people have had to overcome on the degree breaking limits team. So I respect them. Um, as far as me, my, my thing was about the naysayers, like I mentioned earlier. There are a lot of people who, because of my you know, small stature compared to most quarterbacks and most people on the field, um, that doubted me and, and doubted that I would reach a fraction of the heights that I've reached. And uh, all that I could say is motivation, but it's not really motivation for me. Uh, I was never motivated by those people to go harder. I was more motivated uh, by myself. And I think that was a skill that I learned to never lose the self-motivation because at, at any given time, there may be people who you know are hating on you or not. Um, but if you have to rely on them for your fuel, then you'll always be reliant on someone else. You'll be codependent on someone who doesn't even believe in you. Uh, for myself, um, I learned that as long as I always had the want to and I always had the will uh, to make it no matter what, um, it didn't matter what other people said. Um, so I'm very grateful for that uh, partnership with the Degree Breaking Limits team. And uh, God willing, in the future, uh, I could work more with them. Uh, as far as the Boost Mobile deal, uh, it was great. They're uh, a brand that has a history of having great commercials. So that, that was always fun. And then uh, more importantly, um, something that's been big for me in NIL has been using NIL for good. And uh, by using the, the platform that I have as a student athlete, as someone who has these NIL deals, um, I've been able to open up a partnership with the LA Food Bank oh, wow. where proceeds have been going to um, the LA Food Bank. I think we've raised enough money for around 16000 or 20,000 meals so far. So, um, and, and there's been some very generous donations from, uh, you know, people, people, whether it be UCLA boosters like the Talberts, who I'm very grateful to, or um, people who follow me on social media. Uh, by using NIL for good, um, I think that it goes in line with what I'm about. And it, it's, it's, uh, about me reaching my goals, but more importantly, it's about how me reaching my goals affects others positively. Hmm. Well, that's amazing. And uh, if you ever need, if you guys need help with that, our team is willing to help you guys share your stuff, promote it, or uh, if you guys need help in any way with that pro, with the LA food thing, uh, let us know. We can help you out. Thank you so much. Yeah. So uh, we do this fun little segment now on the show. It's called the rapid fire segment. You ready for this? Okay. Perfect. All right. Favorite food. Pizza. Uh, favorite memorable game so far in uh, UCLA? Oh, that Washington State comeback. Mm -hmm. uh, that was that was a, a great game to be part of. Um, so during practices, um, is Chip Kelly yelling or laid back? Um, 
a little bit of both. You, it just depends how locked in we are. Uh, do you have a nickname? Uh, people just call me CG. Hmm. My initials. Any? Uh, have you been part of any? Like, what? Actually, what's your uh, funniest moment in your career so far? In my career, there's too many. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too so many. I. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you've been watching the NFL season. And uh, what are your thoughts so far on this NFL season? Obviously, week four. Uh, and uh, who, who is your who is your team? Or, you know, or are you just a fan of players? I'm more of a fan of players. Honestly, uh, during the college season, uh, since I've been in college, I don't I don't get to watch too much NFL. Uh, we're so focused on, on the season that uh, Sunday is really our only sort of day off. So... Uh, I, I try not to, I try to use Sunday as my day. Okay, it's time to reset, get away from football a little bit, and then come back Monday ready to work. Uh, what was your thoughts on the UC, UCLA basketball run this uh, in, during the March Madness tournament? Oh, I was so proud. Uh, I, I think that it really signaled not just a change in the UCLA basketball program, but a change in, you know, the larger sports of UCLA, um, including football. So, um, I look forward to, you know, finishing off this season well. And then come basketball season, both the women's and men's teams at UCLA, I think will represent us well. Uh, what's it like being close to home and playing in, uh, playing in front of your family members? Uh, it's always great when my family gets to come out. Actually, uh, after the game uh, last week against Stanford, I was able to see my sister, my grandfather, and my mother. They came oh, out nice. uh, since my sister's at Stanford. Hmm. Uh, so who are right, who's more competitive, you or Dorian? Um, I think I'm more competitive than a lot of people. <laughs> uh, so I know obviously. Uh, is your goal to be in the NFL one day? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um. So who who uh? All right. So who who do you? All right. Let me ask you this: Kawhi Leonard's laugh or Kevin Hart's laugh? Uh, Kawhi. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, favorite uh, what do you like to do outside of football in, in college um i'm big in music so I, I enjoy making beats uh i've been taking samples right now of a lot of uh 80s japanese uh neon soul pop, uh, pop. so uh, those are always fun to get those samples and then flip them turn into a beat oh wow uh who's your uh, speaking of music who's your favorite artist right now I have so many. Um, recently, I've been listening to a lot of Common. Oh, okay. Uh, all right, if you had a ch chance to eat lunch with three people, who would it be? Oh, man. Dead or alive? Uh, yeah, anything, anybody. Okay. Hmm. That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say number one, got to throw in Barack Obama. I would love to learn about his process growing up and how he found himself. Uh, number two, I'd have to say Dr. Gooden, who's actually a great, great grandfather of mine who spent 12 summers going to graduate school, um, driving his family out across the country, uh, going to graduate school to get his PhD. Uh, I'd love to learn what motivated him um, to, to, you know, fight against uh, the segregation in the education system in Texas, where he had to go to a whole nother state in order to educate himself and get his PhD. Um, and then number three, well, if anyone's on the table, then Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so the last two things here, our team is part of this foundation. It's called the Hugh Jackson Foundation. Um, he's a former NFL coach. He's now the offensive coordinator at Tennessee State with Eddie George. And um, we're trying to help him prevent human trafficking, making sure the community stays safe. And That's so, excellent. Yeah, so I'll send you the foundation so you can go check it out. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. And the last thing here, uh, would you like to say anything to all the nurses, doctors, and all the essential workers right now? Right. Um, your work during the pandemic has been integral in keeping, you know, lives intact. Uh there, there's probably been so much stress and so many people who have been lost. Um, but each day you come back into work and uh, the, the, 
you'll never be appreciated enough uh, by society. And um, we're, we're always thankful for you. Yeah, well said. And there it is. That wraps up episode 915 with UCLA quarterback Chase Griffin, who obviously recently made news with the Boost Mobile and uh, Degree Deodorant. And also, he's helping out the LA Food Bank. Uh, it's really amazing. And guys, please donate to help him out. Donate. And uh, it's truly amazing to see what you guys are doing. And uh, I just want to say thank you again for coming on the show, Chase. Keep up the great work. Good luck to you guys the rest of the way the season. I'll be watching. Um, and, uh, man, uh, we would like to have you back on the show one day so you can meet the full team. But uh, keep up the great work and uh, stay safe. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I enjoyed the interview. Yeah, no problem. Thank you.